Hey everybody, it's Grady at Twin Creek Audio. I'm back in the studio today, and today I want to show you a lot more about the hybrid setup that I use here in the studio and how I use this setup to make these videos. So I'm going to start off by just kind of explaining generally before I get into close-ups with the handheld camera and stuff. But the key to the situation here is mostly the built-in patch bay on the Soundcraft Sapphire. See, I've connected the Sapphire tape inputs and outputs, which this thing has 44 of them. And so those are connected to two Echo Audio Fire 12s. So I have 24 outputs from the console going to the Echo Audio Fire 12s, and then I have the 24 outputs from the Echo Audio Fire 12s coming back to the console on the monitor channels, which are the big faders. So the little faders go to the audio fires and the big faders come back from the audio fires. The audio fires work like a tape machine, which is why I've held on to them for so long. They'll take whatever's coming in the input of that channel and it comes straight out the output, just like a tape machine would in input mode, so that you can hear during your setup. So you can build your monitor mix and everything while the band or the musician's playing live and you can add you know, effects that aren't going to tape or to the interface in this case. And also the patch bay on the Sapphire allows me to get around the console. Even when the console is not powered on, I can patch my outboard preamps into the interfaces using the tape send and tape return patch points on the built-in patch bay. So that way I'm able to skip the console, even for monitoring, which I'll show you in a second in some of the close-ups that I took. So it's a really cool and flexible setup and the thing I like the most for the video usage is it allows me to really give you honest audio without the console or anything that I don't tell you in the video in the signal path. It's only the things I talk about because I can get around everything else with that patch bay. So let me show you some close-ups. Now I had to put the camera on a stabilizer so it's not shaky. So it's just the camera microphone audio for these next clips. But enjoy the close-up look. You can see how this stuff's actually connected. So here behind the console, you can see all of those snake cables running down there to the corner and then making the corner. And then a couple of them branch off over to the racks. And this whole bundle comes over here to this rack. And inside this rack, are my audio interfaces. Those are the two Echo Audio Fire 12s and they are connected together with a word clock cable and firewire and all of the tape inputs and outputs from the console come through these big snake cables and break out to quarter inch tip ring sleeve connections that go to the interface inputs and outputs. So my system has 24 simultaneous inputs and outputs right there and it's all connected over to the console. Here is an example of one of the snakes that are used to connect the Soundcraft Sapphire to the audio interfaces or a tape machine. This is a spare one that's terminated to 16 RCA jacks for eight tape inputs and eight tape outputs to and from the console. The other end of this, on this version of the Sapphire that I have, you've got this EDAC connector that carries your audio signal. And they are balanced, even though this one's terminated to RCA. A key part of what makes it easy for me to do videos and bypass all the other equipment in the studio to give an honest representation of what a particular piece of gear or instrument sounds like is because of this patch bay. I have the ins and outs to my interfaces set up like a tape machine would have been back when this was made. And for me, my Echo Audio Fire 12s work like a tape machine when you're recording, they act like a tape machine in input mode, so whatever is going in to channel 2, let's say, when it's idling, that is going to come out the output of channel 2, just like it would have on a tape machine. 
so I have simultaneous monitoring so there's no latency when you're monitoring in the studio that way which is one nice thing the other nice thing is for these videos it makes it possible for me to bypass the console itself and I can patch a particular piece of gear straight into the interfaces which those are accessed on each of the channels of the console the tape send right there that goes straight to the interface and if I don't want to come back from the interface straight into the console I can intercept the tape return basically the output of the audio interface right there on the patch bay and send it somewhere else all the outboard gear that I have in these racks is connected to this part of the patch bay most of that I finally have labeled so there are outputs from mic preamps if I'm using an outboard preamp like the PreSonus MP20 right there that patch cable goes straight to the tape send of whatever channel on the interface that I want to record into so a good example is that the console is not even on right now and yet I can still record because this patch bay that's built into the sapphire is pretty much just a passive patch bay so right now I have the tape outputs of 1 and 2. You can see up there a tape return, channel 1 and channel 2. And I just have those directly patched to the alt, alt monitors, which are my KRK RP6s. So I'm just bypassing the console entirely and patching from the outputs of my audio interface into my monitors. And I can control the level inside the computer in this case. That way I don't even have to turn the console on to make videos. Same thing here, there's the PreSonus MP20 mic preamp. The plug on the left that's open would be the input to that mic preamp and then the outputs there are patched to tape sends on two tracks here that go over to the tape inputs or the inputs on the audio fire 12s in the rack over there so I can get to everything this way so this is the outboard patch bay the top two rows of this rack this top patch bay is a Samson S patch plus the top row there comes from the mic panel over near the drum set so those 16 microphone XLRs come out here on the top row first 16 inputs the bottom row of this goes to the console mic inputs on the Soundcraft Sapphire. Over here to the right, the top row there, are the outboard mic preamp inputs. The second patch bay here, those 16 outputs on the top row are coming from this XLR mic panel. And then those left, right, plugs there come out on 21 and 22. 23 and 24 are the main mix outputs from the Sapphire so I can take those somewhere although the built-in patch bay on the Sapphire also has main mix outputs so I have the mix output of the big console available in two places. Understanding signal flow and planning out your hybrid setup is kind of the key to being able to do what you want and to make more honest demonstrations or recordings depending on your needs. In this case we're looking at some of my planning sheets for this is for the external quarter inch patch bay and I printed these and just sat here and sketched and I, this is probably the fifth revision of this uh, piece of paper before I actually connected everything and implemented the plan. And underneath that I've got some of the planning I did for the tie lines on the sapphire patch bay. That one with some things written in. And then another one with uh, most of the stuff figured out finally before I actually connected everything to the tie lines over here on the patch bay. So I had everything on paper before I implemented it over here on the sapphire patch bay and connected all the stuff to the tie lines and then labeled it with the label machine as best I could so that now I don't have to refer back to this but I still save it because these kind of things are so useful for planning and 
studio setups are always going to change. I know mine has over the years, so planning is kind of the key there. So the Sapphire's Patch Bay has been crucial in helping to make these videos and get really honest results on the sound since I don't even have to record through the console or monitor through the console. I can just patch around everything here on the Sapphire Patch Bay. Well, if you'd like to know more about the Soundcraft Sapphire console, I did an entire series of videos on that, so I'll put a link at the end of this video to that playlist with the Soundcraft Sapphire videos because that may help understand more about what I've shown in this video. So I love my setup. It's taken me a long time to put this together and it took a lot of planning and thought when I was setting all this up so that I could do all these things. You know, I knew over the years that I wanted ways to get around things and not have to go through a console for everything that I was tracking. You know, that's a dream of somebody to have a nice analog setup. And in this case, it's mostly a hybrid setup. But, you know, I get all that analog goodness on the front end. I can patch around things. It's a lot easier to make a video and to demonstrate things with a setup like this. And I had all this cool stuff, so it's kind of the reason why I started the channel. I thought, well, I've got all this cool stuff and I've put together this great system. And yeah, it would be really good to make videos with it. So, that's what I did. And I hope you enjoyed this look at my hybrid setup. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you all have an excellent day, night, weekend, weekday, hour, minute, second, nanosecond, whatever it is you're having. Have a good one. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.